Hey there guys, it's Stephen Gates here with MyPLCTraining.com and we've got another video today to help you become a competent PLC programmer. So, in this video, we're going to look at how to connect your computer to a PLC the old school way, which is using an RS-232 serial cable. Thankfully, we don't need serial cable connections as much anymore since we have Ethernet and USB on most new controllers. But you still may need to connect to an older PLC using a serial connection. So let's start here. So remember from part one, the four steps we need to follow to get connected to a PLC are as follows. Choose and connect a cable between your computer and the PLC. This might be a serial cable or USB or Ethernet. In our case, it's going to be a serial cable. Step two, set up your computer so it's ready to connect to the PLC. This might mean setting an IP address on your computer or configuring a COM port for serial, USB, or other communication types. In this case, we just need to make sure the COM port gets configured. Number three, set up your PLC for comms. So some PLCs have dip switches or settings that you have to adjust. Um, in this case, we shouldn't need to do anything. It should be ready out of the box. And then step number four is configure your driver in RS links. Okay, let's jump right in. Step one, this one's pretty easy. First, grab your RS-232 serial cable to connect from your PC to a PLC. So if you have a computer that's newer than 10 years old, you probably do not have a serial port. But that's okay because there's a lot of USB to RS-230 adapter cables that you can buy for 20 bucks or less. So this is what I've got here. This is the serial side, or the RS-232 side, and there's the USB. So most PLCs with RS-232 ports have the classic DB9 connector port, which looks like this. Get this cable ready for you. Most people have seen this. It's the classic DB9 port. So you most likely need a USB to RS-232 adapter that has a DB9 connector on the end. But you also need a null modem cable or a way to switch your PLC adapter or to switch your adapter to a null modem connection. So what's null modem? Basically all it is is a serial cable with a couple of the pins that are swapped from end to end. So instead of a cable like this where each pin on one end is wired to the corresponding pin on the other end there is one pair of wires that is swapped pin 2 and 3 so it's not critical that you remember how null modem cables work you just need to know that you may need one when attempting to communicate to an Allen Bradley PLC so in my case I have a Micrologix 1100 PLC that I want to connect to so I plug first my USB to serial adapter now one thing about this Micrologix 1100 is that it needs a mini DIN connector instead of the classic DB9. So this cable that I just showed you converts from the DB9 to the mini DIN connector. So I'll go ahead and plug this in to the PLC. and then I'll plug in my USB to serial adapter into my computer. You can hear it chirping at me. So that is step one. We've got the cable connected. Step two, when you plug in your serial cable, on most Windows P PCs there shouldn't be much to do. Your computer should see it and automatically download install the correct hardware driver for your USB to serial cable. To make sure it does, I recommend being connected to the internet when you plug the cable in for the first time. That way your computer can go out searching and retrieve the correct driver. 
If it does not automatically install the driver, then you'll have to determine what kind of cable you have and go manually search for and download the correct driver. But for the purpose of this video, we will assume your driver automatically installed. Okay, so now that the driver is installed, we can confirm where the computer thinks it's connected by opening up the device manager. So if you have Windows 10, the best way to do this is just to open up the start menu and type in device manager. The utility should show up here. Just click it to open it up. So from here we want to go to COM ports or ports and we can see we have an item here called USB serial port and it's been assigned to COM3. So depending on your cable you might see something a little bit different here but it should be descriptive USB to RS-232 or something here to show you that you've plugged in your cable and it should assign a number COM3, COM4, COM15 depends. Okay so step three is to prepare the PLC to communicate with your computer but usually there isn't much to do here and this case is no different the PLC should be ready to go out of the box to communicate over RS-232. So let's move to step four. So now we're ready for the final step to get your PC ready to communicate with the PLC and that's to set up the correct RS Links Classic driver. So I'm going to open up RS Links Classic. And then we're going to go to communications and configure drivers. So as you can see there are quite a few driver types that you can choose from and basically that means there's a lot of different types of communication cables and protocols available to connect to the different Allen Bradley PLCs. And actually some PLCs you can use two or three different of these types like this Micrologix 1100 which can be connected using Ethernet, one of these two drivers, or it can be connected to using RS-232 DF1. But some PLCs can only be connected using one of these drivers. So there are three things that will determine which RS Links drivers will work for you. Number one, it depends on what type of communication ports you have available on your computer. Number two, what types of ports are available on the PLC. And finally, number three, what communication cables or adapters you have available to connect between the two. So again, in our case, we'll use the DF1 driver because we have an RS-232 connection from the computer to the PLC. So we'll add new and we'll go with the default name. So now that we've selected it, we'll need to configure the driver. So the first thing to configure is the COM port. So earlier when we looked at Device Manager, we determined that our USB serial port was connected to COM3. So from this COM port drop down menu we'll choose COM3. Next for the device type we need to figure out which device matches our MicroLogix controller. So it starts on PLC channel 0 which would be for connecting to a PLC 5 and some random devices that are more obscure here we have a Logix, Compact Logix devices. This one is SLC channel 0 slash micro slash panel view. So slash micro includes the micro Logix. So that's the one we want to choose. So now we just need to select auto configure to make sure it's ready to go. And that's what you want to see auto configuration successful. If you don't get that, you may have the incorrect cable or you may not have a null modem cable uh, that's converting the pins the way you need to to connect to the PLC. It could be a number of different things but at the end of the day you want auto configuration successful. Okay now that it's configured we'll click OK, close this and we'll open up RS Who, which you can do here.
Just click on this icon. And we should see our new driver here, ABDF1. If we expand it, we can see we can uh, see our Micrologix 1100. And the controller name is Ether because I was doing a demonstration with the Ethernet connection. Um, so there it is. All right, so now that we know we're communicating, we can actually go online with it and do a download or an upload. So let's open up a project in RS Logix Micro. So we're going to open up a simple project and we'll download it to the controller. Okay, so RS Logix is open and I'll just open up a recent project here. So we have an input driving an output on one rung. We have XIC OTE, pretty simple project there. So now we'll go to comms, who active, go online, so we can see what controllers are available. And we should see the same thing we saw in RS Links, RS Who. Expand the DF1 driver now that's available. Click on the controller, click OK. So now we actually just went online with this controller. So we didn't do a download uh, because it already had the same project in it. But we could go to download. Uh, we'll go offline here. And then obviously there's not really a need to download the same project in. But just to give you an example here. So we'll click comms and then system comms select our controller under the DF1 driver and choose download okay downloading program it's called ether the offline program and we're downloading it to the Micrologix which has an ether program already in it but we're gonna download anyway that's okay yes switch to program mode Change back to run mode. Yes, we want to go online. And there we go. So in the next video, we'll look at connecting to the same Micrologix controller except with Ethernet. And remember that connecting the steps for connecting to a Micrologix controller are very similar to the steps for connecting to a Control Logics or Compact Logics controller. And if you like this video and you're interested in getting more free training that will help you become a confident PLC programmer, be sure to check the link below to get your free cheat sheet on the three things you need to know to understand any PLC system. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you next time.